And thank you all for joining us today for our webinar, Maximize the Power of Clever. Uh, we're excited to um, share some information about this um, app that we know a lot of people around the state are using and are looking to learn more about. So we are excited to have a couple of representatives from Clever and a couple of classroom teachers to talk about it today, and we will get to them in just a few minutes. But first, some housekeeping. I am Mary Carnahan. I'm the e-learning e resource specialist with the Department of Education, and I get to host and produce these webinars. So welcome to the March webinar. Um, just a couple, like I said, a couple of housekeeping things as we get started. Everyone was muted as they joined the meeting today. Please keep your line muted. That way we won't have background um, distractions as we go through the call. The chat is available to ask questions and to share ideas. Um, let it, we want it to be a, a communication tool, not just um, to ask questions, but to share what you're doing, to share ideas that you have. So please feel free to share as you um, like. In the chat, you should see that. I believe it's right there on the right side of your screen. Your screen looks different than mine, but I believe the chat and the participant list are over there on the right. Also, if you have your webcam on, you are welcome to turn that off um, because we uh, don't use that in our webinars. Um, we've got the, uh, the screen sharing that our presenters will do. Um, and then we'll use the chat for questions. And as you use the chat, please make sure that you've selected everyone from that to drop down. That way everybody sees your comments and you may have to do that, make that change when I change presenters here in a few minutes. Um, I believe it will default to only send uh, your comments to me or to whoever the presenter is. So just make sure that that says everyone. I am recording today's webinar. Um, fingers crossed, no technological issues. So if you happen to have to leave early or you want to review what um, was shared today or you want to share it with coworkers, that will be available next week in our YouTube channel, our e-learning lab playlist. So um, that will be there. I can share that link here in just a few minutes. Also, we do award PGPs for webinars, and I will send those out likely tomorrow, um, maybe Thursday if it doesn't happen tomorrow. So you'll get your one PGP for this hour of professional development today. So um, this is part of our the, the professional development that we, that you learn, the Office of E-Learning offers. We have another webinar coming up next month on April 23rd, blending it up with free and open content um, that will be hosted by Molly Yole from our office, um, our digital content guru. And um, I, she may have some friends with her on that. I'm not really sure yet. So um, that will also be at 4 o'clock Eastern. So look for that. We're also going to have one more webinar this school year. That will be in May. I haven't scheduled that. The, the, the details aren't finalized yet. So watch for information on that. Also, another way that we um, encourage you all to get your professional learning on is through Twitter, um, utilizing the INE Learn hashtag to connect with others um, around the state, around the country, and even around the world. And join in our um, INE Learn Twitter chat on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. This week's chat will be hosted by Ann Linson, and that will be on college career and life readiness tech skills that's in our administrator strand, but I'm sure there's um, stuff to be gleaned from that, whether you're an administrator or a classroom teacher or um, whatever your role in the school might be. And I thought I had another slide here, but it's not here. Um, so also the Summer of E-Learning is coming up. That will be starting um, the very beginning of June. We've got 21 sites this year that will be hosting conferences. Those are all around the state, so you should be able to find one that is pretty close to you. And those are low or no cost 
conferences with nationally known speakers. So this is it's just such a great opportunity to get um, really, really quality learning really close to home and really inexpensively. So we're, we're happy to have 21 sites. Um, those were announced this week and I will also share that link too since I um, lost that slide. So, but now I wanna turn the presentation over to our um, friends from Clever and our classroom teachers. So we've got Catherine Orderman and Katie Ginsburg from Clever and Claire Trumbull and Matt Cochran, our classroom teachers in Wayne Township. And hopefully I didn't butcher anybody's names too bad. And I'm gonna turn the presentation, the screen over to Catherine. So this is gonna take just a second or two or um, a few to turn this over to her and I will let them all introduce themselves and get started with their presentation. Great. Uh, so my name is Catherine, and I am a district success manager here at Clever. Uh, so we're super excited to be joining you all today and really appreciate you spending your Tuesday afternoon with us. Um, so this is me. Uh, I used to be a teacher for five years in Louisiana and Alabama. So um, I'm originally from the Midwest, but moved south after going to college uh, where I was a teacher and used Clever in my classroom. So I came to Clever with clever experience already, um, but Teacher PD is really near and dear to my heart to make sure that all of you have everything that you need to be successful this year using Clever and also in the future. Um, so I'll give Katie a chance to introduce herself as well. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm so excited to see you all here attending this webinar. Um, I am actually originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. I didn't really stray very far from home. Um, I was a teacher, but actually in South Korea, I, I, we did not have Clever in our classrooms over there, but I joined the team here and it's been amazing. I've been here for the past two years. So I'm really excited um, for Catherine to show you all about the teacher tools that we have set up and created for you guys, and I'll let her take it from here. Great. So we are really fortunate today to be working with two teachers from Wayne Township. So Matt and Claire, if you could unmute yourselves, I'd love to have you introduce yourselves, what you teach, and then tell us uh, your favorite clever feature that you use in your classroom. Hi, my name is Matt Cochran. I'm a kindergarten teacher at South Elementary School in Wayne Township. Um, I teach kindergarten, and my favorite thing about clever is um, the favoriting feature. Great. Thanks. My name is Claire Trumbull. I teach 7th and 8th grade language arts, both Horizon and Gen Ed at Lynnhurst 7th and 8th grade center. And my favorite feature for Clever is just my teacher page where I can drop everything in and my kids go to one place and have access to all of it. And I know that they know where to find their resources. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, we are going to get to hear a little bit more from them as they talk about specific parts of the Clever portal later on. Um, but I got the opportunity, Katie and I did, last week to talk to Matt and Claire, and they are truly incredible educators. <laughs> Just hearing about the things they're doing in their classroom were so impressive and made me really proud to know that they were clever teachers. So thanks, guys, for joining us. Awesome. So today's agenda is really to get to know Clever a little bit better for those of you who maybe aren't using it or see it as a student tool. And then we'll go through the teacher portal and what tools you have access to today. Then we'll give you the opportunity to become a Clever Champion. We have a little bit of homework for you to do, but there are prizes involved. And then we'll have time to ask an expert where you can ask Katie and I questions, as well as Matt and Claire a few questions. So Clever is a, an end-to-end -end education platform that aims to support teachers as well as students to make to save time and also just like get into their resources really quickly. So what you've most likely interacted with is the Clever portal, which is one a one stop shop for you to find all of the resources that you have in your district um, and allow your students to sign in really quickly to those resources. We also have the Clever library, which we'll be talking about today, which is kind of like an app store, but all of the apps are vetted to make sure that they're safe for students, they're easy to share. Um, and they also are applications that we know have proven track records. 
The last piece is Clever Goals, which right now only a few districts in Indiana have access to, um, but it's something that you may have access to soon, depending on whether or not your district chooses to go in this direction. Uh, and Clever Goals is a platform that allows student data to be reflected in the Clever portal. Um, so students know what their goals are for each application and are able to work towards those goals every week and give teachers a roundup report of how students are doing. So before Clever, many teachers and students would have to remember a bunch of passwords, a bunch of unique usernames, and uh, we would see like seven different usernames taped to a post-it note on students' desks. Uh, especially for younger students like those in kindergarten, they would have to remember which password went to which application, and a lot of time was wasted just getting into applications themselves. After Clever, uh, it's a lot easier to just log right into your applications and everything is immediately accessible. So without having to re-enter credentials, you just sign into Clever and then have access to anything that it is that your district is using um, without having to re-enter an additional password or username. Clever is also all over the nation. So you have access to a huge community of teachers, not only in Indiana, but also throughout the nation as a Clever teacher. Uh, what we're really excited about is about a fourth of the students throughout the US are using Clever. 51% um, of the schools, but a fourth of students log in every day to Clever. In Indiana specifically, there are 208 districts who are currently active on Clever, um, and almost a million students and almost 100,000 teachers. So we're really excited to be partnering with the DOE today for this e-learning session, especially because of how many teachers and students are already accessing Clever. We want to make sure that you know how to use this tool as effectively as possible because we built it for you. Great. So now we're going to dive into the teacher portal. Um, thank you to everyone who is posting questions. Continue to do so. Katie is responding to them as they come in. Uh, so feel free to do that as we go through this. And if we're seeing trends, we'll go ahead and talk about them as well. But everything will also be in the chat. So the teacher portal is something we built after we realized that students had a really strong experience and district admins had a really strong experience on Clever, but that teachers are the people who are on the ground and we needed to add more tools for them. So many of these rolled out in the last year. We have new things coming out every day, um, but this is, as of right now, all of the things that you can do when you log into Clever. So you can troubleshoot student logins, monitor student work time, and customize your own teacher page. And we'll get a chance to see Claire's teacher page today, which is really robust and has a ton of awesome resources for her students. So the first thing is actually getting students into Clever, which is a huge first step. Um, if for whatever reason you have a new student who has come into your class or you're coming back from a break, spring break I know is coming up for all of you, and your students have forgotten their login, you can generate a backup code from your Clever dashboard. Uh, and get that student logged in immediately and then worry about figuring out what their password is at another time. You can also print a class set of badges, which are our um, developmentally appropriate login method for pre-K, K, and 1 mostly. So to generate a backup code, you're actually going to click help a student on the right-hand side of your portal. Search for that student and you'll get a code that you can type into their computer. They just click ask for help. And then once you type that in for them, they're able to log right in. So this is a really easy way to just get students right in in the moment. It is a one-time use code, so that also keeps it super secure. We also offer Clever badges. So this gift moves really fast, but realistically, this is how fast it is to get students into Clever if you're using a badge. So they just hold up their specific Clever badge and are immediately logged in and then are able to just click on their applications. If you have badges enabled for your class, when you log in to Clever, you're actually able to download a class set. Before we get to that, um, Matt, if you can unmute yourself, I would love to have you talk about your badge system in your classroom, which is amazing and was really inspiring when we heard about it. Um, okay. My, I, like I said before, I teach kindergarten, um, 
And before using Clever, it wasn't really very feasible to get my kids on technology every day because I was doing a lot of the logging. They didn't know how to make their first names or last names. Finding like uppercase, lowercase was really hard. I'm doing the numbers. So Clever has really helped us a lot because all they have to use are these simple QR codes. I manage my QR codes. Um, I have uh, kind of like a pocket chart in my room. It's shaped like an apple, but it's kind of small. And um, it's hung up low enough for the kids to reach. And I just have all their cubby numbers. Uh, written on the back of a little tiny uh, color coded QR or color coded cardstock with the QR code um, taped or pasted to the other side. And then I just laminate it to keep it nice. Um, the kids independently go, they find their number. I don't want to put their names on it just for security reasons, but I have their numbers on the back so they can find, grab. If you're number seven, they go log it right in. Um, and it really is just as quick as we saw on the last screen. And they just go put it back to keep those organized and managed. And we, I mean, for a class of five and six year olds, we hardly ever lose them or damage them. Um, and it's really, really easy to get them on technology. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we also have teachers who uh, recently, a teacher from Kentucky tweeted this GIF of how she set up her badges. Uh, we have teachers who put them on headbands and kids wear them on sweatbands on their forehead and like forehead badges. Uh, so teachers are super creative in the ways that they set up badges. and. If you want to learn more about how uh, you can set up badges in your classroom, we have a teacher community page that's dedicated to badges best, best practices. Um, so thanks for showing that. In order to download badges, if you have them enabled, you're going to go to the Classes tab at the top right-hand side of your uh, portal. And then you'll see in the top right corner, it'll say Download Class Set of Badges. Or if you just need to generate one for one student specifically, you can search for that student and you can download their badge or avoid it. So if for some reason one of Mass Apple's escaped to the playground, he could void that badge and regenerate it to keep it super secure so that someone else doesn't accidentally pick it up and use it thinking that it's theirs. Um, but with good systems like the ones that Matt has, badges really are a very like usable product and it works really well to just print them at the beginning of the year, laminate them, and then they last. Awesome. Another thing you can do on the classes tab is monitor student learning time. So this is really helpful as just a general classroom management tool. So when you first click on the classes tab, you're going to see any class that you teach. So in this example, this teacher teaches fourth and fifth grade. If you are self-contained, you might see your kindergarten math, reading, science, etc. cetera. Uh, and from this first page, you can actually click right here to launch an application yourself to the entire class or log the entire class out, which is particularly helpful if you have shared devices. So as your friends rotate from station to station, you can make sure everything is reset. Once you click on that page, so if I click on fourth grade, I'm gonna see all of the information about this class. I can download my badges or login information. I can launch an application from up here or log the class out. And I can also see who is logged in and who is logged out. Uh, so right now, this student, Jaden, is not logged in. If I need to follow up with him or his family, I can click on Jaden's name. And his parents' contact information is going to populate right next to him, uh, which is really helpful to just have everything in one spot. So this is actually how you launch an application. I go to classes and I can either click on it here and launch my Brain Pop app, or I can click through to kindergarten, see all of this information. No one is currently logged in because this is a demo account. Um, this is all demo data. So making sure that student data is staying secure, none of this is real information. Uh, but I can launch an application either of those ways and it's really easy to get into. We're actually going to take a little bit of a closer look at Matt's page so you can see um, earlier today some of his students were logged in and some were not. Oops. Sorry about that. Let me get the presentation back up and going. Um, so you can see who's logged in and who is not. From this page, you can also see the student information. Normally, you would see the student's last name and then his parents' contact information, um, but you can download badges, do all of the things that you need to do to manage your class from here. Another great feature, and this is one that Claire is going to share a bit about, is our teacher pages. 
So uh, Claire, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to your teacher page and show a couple of the features that we have. So when Claire goes to her page, um, what she's going to see, Claire has actually already completed all of our Clever Academy lessons. So this box up here is totally done. But if you have not logged in yet and done these, you'll see some progress that you can make uh, to dive into each of these tools a little bit more. Uh, but she's going to see her application first. And one of the features that she has access to is favoriting, which is Matt's favorite feature. So Matt, if you want to tell us a little bit more about how favoriting works both for your students and also for you, that would be great. And then Claire, I'll have you talk about your teacher page. Um, I really like favoriting. Uh, we have at my school uh, touchscreen Chromebooks um, for kindergartners. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have five to a class. Um, sometimes we borrow other computers that aren't touchscreen, and it's really hard for kids to scroll. Um, but teaching them how to favorite pops all those apps that we most that we use most often to the top, so they can quickly find it and get into it without having to scroll through um, and look at all the other ones. It just gets us quick into the ones we're using at the time. So it's pretty simple, but um, it makes it just makes life easier. Awesome. So that is something that both you and your students can do. Um, and it's pretty easy to show them how to do. From this main landing page, you can also see this is where I'm helping a student. I can see announcements. I can also access some Clever resources um, and the Clever Academy. So if I click on this little question mark right here, I can get to uh, the community as well. Um, I can get to the community as well. And oops, if it's going to let me do it. Normally, when you click on this question mark, it's going to pop up a community, and you can head over to um, our discussion board where you can share best practices, ask questions, see what other teachers are doing, et cetera. I'm going to go ahead and go to the My Page tab. So, this is where Claire has set up her page. Uh, okay, here we go. So Claire, if you want to tell us a little bit more about how you use this page and what you've added to it today. So I use, I use this page when we're working on different units. And so I can drop into my class resources, um, links to websites. Um, today we were using it because we're working on projects. And when they're finished with their projects, they could go to, um, Hi. sorry. Hi. How you can tell she's really a teacher. <laughs> okay, we're, we're just getting out of school. So um, so I dropped in um, a couple of grammar pages. I dropped in some read works. And so I've actually um, assigned them some different readings or different um, grammar that they can do when they're finished with their project. One of the things with um, one of my classes is they are writing a story. And then in, in, within their story, they have to have at least one foreign speaking um, character. And so they're able to type it in and use Google Translate to put that authentic text in there. I've also got their Google Classroom page so they can get to all of their Google Classrooms. They can get to their Google Calendar. Um, and then Quizlet we use for our STEMs, grammar, um, story. They can make cards. This way they all come right here. They can use it um, down below in the general resources. That's like when we're doing research and stuff, I'll use the OWL writing lab. So I'll pull that one up. I'll move other things down. Um, Overdrive is there for our kids, dictionary.com. If I have a brain pop, I'll just slide it up. Um, we also do a, sometimes in a couple of my classes, we do um, TED Talks or they have to create a TED. So I'll pull that up as a reminder to them. Um, and then I just m move things as I need them. As I don't need them, I just slide them down into general resources rather than deleting them. But it's nice because I just say, go to my Clever page, and they know that whatever they need to be working on, they're going to find that link right there. And so I just go to the library if I'm looking for something new. If it's not there, then I just go over and, and add a resource and go find it, um, just type in, you know, like where I want to go. And then once, if it doesn't pop up, then I will go search it and bring the link back over mm -hmm. so that I can add it as a resource. And 
then I just keep building it. Yeah. Claire's done a great job of setting up all of these things. And when she was talking about dropping or dragging, it's really easy to just pull brain pop up or pull it back down, depending on how active that particular app needs to be at the moment. Uh, she also uploaded a unique icon. A lot of teachers who teach lower elementary will actually upload a picture of their face so that if their students have multiple classes um, and maybe don't know Ms. Trumbull from Mr. Cochran in terms of spelling, they can certainly recognize their face. Um, so you can upload any kind of icon that you want or if you want to make it topical to the project you're working on, uh, all of this is customizable up here as well. One important piece is as you are working on your Clever page, it's important to make sure it's visible to students. So a lot of teachers um, will not have clicked on this box, and so it won't show up. They'll do all this work, so make sure that you've toggled it back on once you have set up your teacher page. Claire also mentioned the library, so let's switch over to that. Um, Claire, when you log into the library, what do you normally do when you're looking for things? Do you just generally explore or do you have something specific you search for? How do you normally use this tool? Well, if I know that there's a specific topic I'm looking for, I'll type it in the search. If something doesn't pop up, then I'll scroll down to where the um, different subject areas are. So let's say I'm going to do um, something with a related to social studies, I might not search in English. I might look in social studies to see what resources are available there. Great. One of the things that um, I've used before in the social studies is there is, I believe, the New York Times and another publication, and some things on it are free and some things are not, so you just kind of have to see what is available to you. And then, so... Um, I look to see if it has some, some interesting articles that will help the kids with their research. If not, um, then I will look at maybe we're doing presentations. Is there a different way for them to do presentations rather than just Google Slides? They sometimes get into that habit of just doing the same thing over and over. So try and bring some a couple of different ideas for them to present. Um, I also use it, sometimes I do cross-curricular with science or social studies. And so we may have an article, they may be doing something else. So I'll put as much on my page as I can for them to find the information that they need. But sometimes I can just get lost on the Clever Library, just looking at all the cool things that are there and what getting ideas for how I could use those down the road. Awesome. As you can see, there are a ton of resources here. So definitely knowing what you're looking for when you get in there is helpful, but certainly a lot to explore. Um, for applications, one thing to note, so you saw when we searched for the New York Times, it just gave us the opportunity to add a link to the New York Times actual website. If an application is one that Clever rosters for you, like Newsella is another place to get a lot of information, um, it will say install instead of add link, and it will actually create the account for your students using non-personally identifiable information. So it'll just share their first name. So when I was a teacher, I used Newsella all the time, especially because my articles could be in multiple languages, which was really helpful because I was in English as a second language teacher. Uh, so I would create accounts for my students and just share a ton of data because it was a resource I knew we needed, or I would pop my class code up on the board and then I would spend 20 minutes getting kids to actually sign up for Newsella. Uh, which could have just spent using it. So now with Clever, uh, not only is less information shared, so I don't have to give graduation year or email address or anything, I'm just giving their first name, uh, but I also just click install and then it is live on my Clever page as opposed to uh, having to spend all of that time logging students in. You can also get a preview of the content. So if you have not heard of an application before, You'll get some screenshots of what it's actually going to look like, as well as the description. Um, and it'll also tell you who and for what purpose this application should be used. Great. Um, Claire and Matt, we're about to, we're going to move into a QA section, but if there's anything else that you wanted to share about how you're using Clever in your class, um, now would be a great time to do so. So Matt, if there's anything you want to share, we'll start with you, and then Claire, we can pop over to you as well. 
Um, I don't know that I have anything else to anything more to share. Um, but I mean, just overall, it's been a really great resource for my kids to to use to help them access things they couldn't access before. So the awesome. amount of visuals on the website, the ease of logging in. Um, has just made life a lot easier for me and for them to be able to access all these resources that would have taken um, a really long time before. I remember taking home uh, the Chromebooks before and just pre-logging in and saving their um, passwords for every single website. It took hours and hours and hours. And now they just, it's all just run so smoothly through um, the Clever dashboard. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Claire, is there anything else that you wanted to share about how you're using Clever in your classroom? Um, no, I, I just see it as a great tool, like you said, of saving time and not having to um, have them go to this website and then this website. It's all in one place, even with um, a Google Classroom, putting announcements on and things like that. Sometimes kids would say they couldn't get it, whereas when it's on the Clever, I know that it's there. I know that they can get to it. I know that they're not going to have to worry about the site not working or them not finding what they're looking for or they type the wrong letters in or whatever. This way it's all in one place. It saves a lot of time. And I'm just and I'm just now, you know, really using it um, to a point where the kids are getting comfortable with it. So looking down the road, I can't wait to um, you know, just create it as much as I can. And then like when we have to do Mastery Connect or something else, I can just slide it up and then it can disappear so the kids don't have to see all of this stuff in the, in the, in the classroom resources every single time they log in. So that it also makes it interesting for them that every time they log in, they don't know what's going to be there, what they're going to have access to to work on when they're finished with things. But for me, that's just been... Um, kind of a lifesaver of kids not having to say, well, what do I do now? Um, they they know what they need to do. They, they've got all of these resources. They can pick and choose where they go. Um, but also that the resources are available to them, even if I haven't assigned things like IXL, they can just go in there. They can access the math. They can access science. They can access all kinds of things. So they're finding ways to use it, these apps that, you know, normally they probably wouldn't have gone and looked at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it also is really helpful if ever you have a substitute to be able to just log everything into your teacher page and then it's right there. Kids are already in that habit of just going to it, um, which makes it a little easier to make sure that <laughs> kids are staying on track during that time. So um, the last piece that we have for you before we'll have time for some Q&A is a little bit of homework. So I know that next week and the week after are the two spring breaks for Indiana. So we're encouraging you to use that time to explore the Clever Library, install an app, or publish your teacher page. And if you do, we have some really great prizes we're going to be handing out. Um, so one of them is an Apple Watch. I'm very excited that our marketing team has provided us with one. Um, but we'll also have some t-shirts, some other Clever swag that we will be sending out. Um, so we'll be checking on April 8th to see who has made a change to their Clever page between now and then giving you that spring break time to dive in. Um, and then we will be announcing a winner. So feel free to share with your fellow teachers, though I will be looking at this list of who actually attended the webinar to give priority for the Apple Watch. So good news. Awesome. Uh, so please know that we are here to help. Our goal is really to improve the classroom experience for teachers and students, save you time, and also give you the opportunity to scale learning. We know how valuable your time is. We really appreciate you spending some of it with us today. Uh, and as you have questions, I know Katie has been responding throughout the webinar, but if you have any questions for us or um, for Matt and Claire who are still on the line, uh, feel free to go ahead and post them now. And we'll take a few minutes for that. If you don't have any questions, thanks so much for joining us. All right, I'm going to throw this slide up just so that you know how you can contact us more. Um, but Katie and I will stay in the chat for a few minutes in case it comes up. And I'll just pop in for a second. This is Mary. Thanks for sharing everything. Um, and thanks to Claire and Matt for um, taking time out of their um, 
days to um, help in this webinar. And uh, yeah, hopefully people will reach out to you guys with questions um, about Clever. I know that we already have a lot of people on the state using it, so um, and it looks like there's a question, so I'll turn that back over to you guys. Yes, okay. So, and then Terry just asked about the third grade and using badges. I think that it's really up to district admins how they set everything up. Um, one of the things that we do offer is badges with pins. So if you want the badge to be the username and then have a password, like a seven digit password, uh, to transition students from school badges to type in a username and password, you can talk to your district admin about setting that up, Carrie. Okay? Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, as you have questions, feel free to reach out to uh, info at clever.com or you can just get us. We respond to all of our tweets. <laughs> Natasha, who is with us today as well, is uh, the one who is the great go to for that. Thank you. Thank you all so much, and everybody enjoy your um, what is hopefully a sunny afternoon in your area of the state, and um, hopefully we'll be able to connect again soon through a webinar or a Twitter chat or another way, hopefully the summer at the Summer V Learning. Thank you all.